runs before the chariot of King Ahab as King Ahab goes down the mountain and across the plain of Jezreel to the king city of Jezreel. And Elijah arrives there at the same time the king does. And at that moment, Elijah has a hope. He has a hope. What is his hope? He loves Israel. He wants to see Israel repenting and returning again to faithful worship. But he knows that it all depends on the king. For the people are going to follow the example of the king. And his hope is that the king, having witnessed who the true God is, will repent. Ahab goes in and tells evil Queen Jezebel what has happened. And does Jezebel say, we've been wrong. Baal is not God. Jehovah is the Lord. Let's worship him. No. Instead, she says, may the gods, meaning the gods of the Sidonians, may the gods do so to me and more if by tomorrow this time Elijah is not like one of my prophets. In other words... She's breathing out threats to kill him. Now, for years, this man has been sacrificially seeking to bring the people of Israel to repentance and turn them again back to true worship and especially to get the king and the queen to be leaders of the nation in this matter. For years, he sacrificed. He's devoted himself to serving God all for this moment of hope for repentance and transformation. Instead, it all blows up in his face. Everything he worked for, everything he sacrificed for, down the tubes. How about you? How many of you have been invested in godly outcomes and you've knocked yourself out trying to do the right thing trying to serve God according to his will hoping and praying that as you do things will get better in your family in your marriage in your business in your job in your church in our nation and after years and years of hard work and sacrifice, the whole thing blows up in your face. And everything you hope for seems to evaporate. What do you do? Probably something very similar to Elijah. You say, it's enough already. I'm no better than anybody else. Just let me die. I'm fed up with this life in this world. I don't want to do it anymore. I quit. That's what Elijah did. We're all of us sinners. And as sinners, we are more than able to become disgusted and discouraged and despair to the point where death looks pretty good. We say, I just wish I'd die. That's what Elijah said. Now the reason why we get like that is because we get ahead of God and because we begin to focus all of our hopes on earthly things. We want to see things get better in this world, in our lives, in our families, in our nation. We want to th see things improve. We work so hard. And things just get worse. God, are you really there? Do we ever find ourselves questioning, why am I doing this? That's a great question. Why are you here? Elijah, God asks him, why are you and I here? Are you here today because you think that by being faithful in worship and by giving an offering to the Lord, getting your family to church, that that's going to make things better in your home? That's going to fix what's wrong with our society? Are you invested in trying to bring about earthly outcomes? If so, you're going to be disgusted and discouraged to the point of despair. Because people are going to stay sinners until the day Jesus comes home. 
People are going to disappoint you and me till the day Jesus comes back to get us. And if you're doing all of this because you want to try to make things different in the world, you've got the wrong reason for why you're here. But, if you're here because you know God is true, if you're here because you know what He's done for you, having cleansed you of your sins, having suffered death and risen again from the dead, and is coming to take you home again, if you're here to live a life to His glory, regardless of earthly outcomes, if you're here to be devoted to Him, regardless of earthly payoffs, then you've got good motivations. But if you're here thinking, if I do all these things, then God's going to take care of me and everything's going to be fine here in this earthly existence, think again. For God allows His people to suffer. A good and a loving God allows His people to suffer. Disappointments and frustrations and discouragement. He lets it happen. Why? So that our hearts would be bound up in a hope for a kingdom which is to come. And not in this world. He removes earthly payoffs so that our faith be founded upon heavenly truth. God loves us. And in spite of how awful things appear, God is working good. They may not be working out the way you hoped they would, but God is working good. And God tells Elijah, he says, Elijah, why are you here? And Elijah says, the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They have torn down your altars. They are killing the priests, the prophets, and I am the only one left. Just let me die. And the Lord God says, you're not the only one left. Quit putting your, your faith in these earthly circumstances. Don't think that just because there's an earthquake or there's a fire or there's a terrible wind that that means something's wrong. I'm not in those things. But I am here with a still small voice to tell you that I'm here. That I love you. That what I've done for you is going to give you eternal life. And that I'm working good even when it looks like everything's wrong. God is working good even when it looks like everything's wrong. The promise of God is all things work together for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. So no matter how terrible something appears to us emotionally, the truth is that God is working good. And God says to Elijah, he says, I have reserved in Israel 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal or kissed him. So you see, God is telling Elijah, you don't have all facts. You don't have all knowledge. So quit trying to make judgments. And ask yourself again this question. Why are you here? Are you here for earthly payoffs? Or are you here because I love you? And because I'm working good through you? even though you can't see it. Our Savior Jesus lived out His life without earthly payoffs. In the end, as He hung upon the cross, suspended between earth and heaven, all comforts of earthly nature were withdrawn from Him. And all sense of His Father's love was withdrawn from Him. He even cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was left utterly alone. But his faith did not falter. He knew his father loved him. And he knew that from his wounds flowed forgiveness of our sins and everlasting life to God's children. The kingdom of God was being won by his sacrificial death in those moments of feeling utterly alone. Yet he did not despair. 